Hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming to our session, uh, Aspirations versus Realities, where we're going to be talking about the results of a survey of nonprofit organizations in regards to how they are prioritizing their investments across the different components of their marketing stack, including their website. Um, so I'd love to get a quick show of hands. Who here is from a nonprofit? Oh, great, it's okay. a little, little over half. So um, this, this hopefully will be relevant. <laughs> um, we are from Blue State, uh, an agency that uh, focuses primarily on working with nonprofits. And um, I am uh, the SVP of Platform Partnerships. It just means I work on the things that we build, like websites. So I, I help uh, establish new relationships with clients. And I also um, build relationships with other partner agencies that we use to build Drupal sites in particular. Hello, I'm uh, Jack Stedman. I'm Chief Technology Strategist at Blue State. Um, so I head up all of our technology and data work uh, and spend a lot of my time consulting with nonprofits on this very topic. So for a little bit of background um, on the research that we're gonna present here today, uh, we asked to hear from organizations who use Drupal or WordPress uh, from their for their websites. There are obviously a lot of other CMS platforms in use by nonprofits, but these are the two that we most commonly work in. Um, and we were looking for insights that were most relevant to this community, but also to our, our core business. Um, so to set the stage, uh, first we'll talk about uh, the role of the website in the ever-expanding MarTech ecosystem uh, used by nonprofits. So 10 years ago, this is what a typical Blue State client looked like. We built a lot of websites in Expression Engine. Um, a lot of our clients were locked into uh, long-term contracts with Blackbaud, uh, which was and still is uh, a big uh, name in nonprofit tech. Um, and you know, because Blackbaud's uh, digital tools were pretty clunky, uh, we built and often added in uh, our own platform, the Blue State Tools, um, so that we could be a bit more nimble uh, in our email segmentation, data collection, uh, and fundraising work. But around uh, 2015, uh, the landscape uh, began to change. Um, most of our clients outgrew Expression Engine uh, and started moving toward uh, more sophisticated open source uh, content management systems like WordPress and Drupal, um, and obviously much larger developer communities um, and so on. Um, and at the same time, Salesforce started to make a massive push into the nonprofit space. And we started to see uh, a lot of our clients migrating to Salesforce uh, and to a lesser extent, uh, HubSpot. Um, at this point, we started to see a split. Some organizations stuck with the nonprofit-specific, all-in-one platforms like uh, Every Action and Engaging Networks, where CRM, email, fundraising, advocacy, and so on are all rolled into the same, um, you know, same platform. Whereas others started to take a more composable approach, um, adding in, uh, you know, separate tools for email and donations and so on, uh, built around uh, Salesforce or or, or HubSpot. Um, and so the result was that uh, there's a lot more fragmentation. There's a lot more, uh, a lot more systems, a lot more tools that, that come into play. Some of these tools are more sophisticated than, than the ones they're replacing, um, but it creates a lot of fragmentation and it, and it, uh, it means that uh, every single one of our clients is running a, a unique combination of these tools. But if we zoom out even further, uh, we can see that the bigger picture is even more complicated. You know, CRM fundraising and, and, uh, and email are pretty common to most of our clients, uh, but depending on the organization, there could be a number of other, other tools uh, in place. Um, you know, some organizations do political work or advocacy work and have tools for that. Um, uh, many uh, nonprofits uh, rely on in-person or virtual events or peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Some uh, offer online communities or online courses, um, and some are even leaning into uh, new tools like A-B testing, personalization, machine learning, data warehousing, and so on. So nobody's doing all of this, uh, but our typical client will you know, have some number of these five, six, seven of these different platforms um, in place. Oops. 
So we're primarily interested in what these changes in the technology landscape mean for websites, uh, particularly because we build a lot of websites and we respond to a lot of website RFPs and we see uh, there are changes in what's being asked for in terms of skill sets and the size of projects and the types of relationships. Um, and we really want to understand where these trends are heading so we can think about multi-year planning for nonprofit websites. Um, so something that's easy to spot from this slide alone is that today the website is competing with many more systems for an organization's attention and investment. Uh, in a given year, there's only so much a team can accomplish and so much budget, budget to go around. Uh, so this might mean that decisions are delayed on when to make a website redesign happen or even when to um, do you know, sort of essential technical upgrade. Um, so we want to learn how organizations are navigating these decisions and which parts of the stack are highest in priority and what are the expected benefits of your investments. So to learn about this, we conducted a survey. We ran the survey between February and May this year, and we invited around 300 organizations, and of which about 58 responded and completed the survey. So we started by asking uh, this question, if they agreed or disagreed with this statement, our website is our most important asset for marketing and supporter engagement. So I'd love a raise of hands uh, for people here. Uh, do you agree or disagree? If you agree, raise your hand. So about 45, 50%. Um, we, we actually got a higher uh, response in uh, in our survey, about 72 respondents either agreed or strongly agreed, but that left about a third, 28%, uh, who think that other systems are as important or more important than the website. Uh, so with so many other systems in play now, this isn't entirely surprising, but we wanted to learn more about which systems are on the rise in importance. So the importance of the website to the website is uh, influenced by what the organization thinks of as the website's primary jobs. So we asked, what are the most important jobs your website has to do? And here you can see the responses grouped in three buckets uh, by the size of the organization, uh, by their operating budget. So brand awareness and general education uh, is a consistent answer across all three groups. Um, but after these two, the results diverged a bit depending on the size of the organization. Um, for smaller nonprofits, providing community resources and enabling community connections were highly important. But as the nonprofit grows in size from you know, possibly a, a local organization to a regional or national one, um, then fundraising and donor acquisition really starts to become important and event promotion becomes very important along with building their email list and mobilizing for advocacy depending on the focus of the organization. So these are the most important jobs that the websites need to perform. Um, but next, let's, next, look, uh, next, let's look at uh, what components are used to power the website to accomplish these ends. Right, so the website isn't just the core site running on, on the CMS. So all these other platforms in play serve up front ends of their own, right? So forms, landing pages, event registration pages, and so on. So we asked what platforms made up the, the front-facing user experience, and you can see that. Uh, email, SMS, marketing automation tools uh, are, were used by 84% uh, of respondents. Event management systems were closely behind at 71%, uh, followed by fundraising platforms at 67%, uh, which is actually, uh, to me, surprisingly, just a little bit low. Um, but then advocacy, social media, job recruitment systems all came in in the 30 to 40% range. So what that means is that maintaining consistency of user experience uh, and creating content on the part of staff can be a difficult and fragmented experience. And in fact, we hear from our clients that all these systems aren't working all that well together. Of course, the proliferation of specialized marketing tools creates a new challenge, data fragmentation on the back end. And in fact, we're frequently hearing from our clients these days that their systems aren't talking to each other. So there's a lot of data integration work uh, that needs to happen to make the platform as a whole function as well as it can. But given all this increasing complexity, to get a sense of where nonprofits are heading, we asked how priorities are changing across a range of tools and capabilities. You can see here in the top right that there are four that stand out as increasing in priority. So marketing personalization, CRM, the primary website, and email. So we're gonna set the, uh, the website aside uh, for just a minute and take a closer look at why CRM, personalization, and email are rising in priority. 
Nonprofits know from other sectors, particularly retail and e-commerce, that personalization works. Uh, it works to increase engagement, drive additional revenue, and they're trying to get there, right? They're trying to figure out how to apply these technologies and tactics to, to their own work. That may be part of what's driving the adoption of a wider range of tools and more sophisticated platforms, but getting all those tools to work together is hard, and I think organizations are really struggling to unify the experience and the data. We heard a lot of respondents saying, we want to make better use of the tools that we already have. So um, let's look at the CRM. Uh, we asked why the CRM is increasing in, in importance, and here we have some responses that are representative of the reasons uh, we've heard so far. Um, our CRM has always been a high priority for our organization, but is only growing more so as we try to better integrate it with the site and build out user journeys. Uh, we have tech debt left over uh, in our CRM due to staff turnover and issues with our CRM software provider that are now, uh, we're investing in correcting that. Um, uh, we need more tailored interactions with our audience and that's increased substantially. We want to be able to personalize user journeys and content and our first step is capturing users' info and engagement history. And then lastly, data just feels more important than ever. So uh, we have a range here of, you know, it's, we're trying to do new things and better integrate. Um, we are uh, trying to correct technical debt and then, you know, just sort of upgrade our stack. Um, we are trying to create tailored experiences and we're trying to work with data more holistically. Um, CRMs are now designed to integrate with many other systems and so by nature they gravitate to a very central position in an organization and nonprofits adopt these systems because they have a vision of unifying supporter data um, in hopes that it'll create more targeted communication and personalization. But CRMs aren't necessarily great at making data useful and actionable in real time. Um, you know, often we see uh, the data syncs happen on 24-hour cycles. There may be uh, additional expenses to pull data out and do things with it, depending on the product. Um, and so we see that many of our customers are uh, adding additional systems for marketing personalization or CDP to hook it up to the CRM, to, which is more nimble and, you know, they can do things in real time. Um, and that leads us to the next set of tools that nonprofits are prioritizing. So why is personalization such a high priority for uh, half of respondents? Uh, as we saw in the previous slide, the ability to support personalization strategy is a key driver uh, for investment in the CRM. Uh, but as the, as, the quotes, uh, as the quotes on this slide illustrate, marketing automation is typically the next level goal once an organization is in a good place uh, with a CRM. So we adopted a marketing CRM and automation platform to deliver personalized email content. We're looking at personalization to deliver engagement opportunities based on what they're interested in. We're optimizing donor acquisition with appropriate cultivations, asks, and CTAs, and by tailoring messaging. You can see here that organizations are looking to lean into personalization to respond to softening responses to older and less sophisticated tactics like light boxes. Uh, supporters have grown accustomed to personalized messages. Uh, you know, in their in the in their other uh, activity on the internet, and so they don't they don't respond as well to generalized content or 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 a mess messaging that doesn't speak to their interests. So the expectation is that if we can tailor messaging and calls to action better, make them reflect where a person is in their journey with the organization, they'll drive a stronger response and ultimately lead to more revenue. So at Blue State, a big focus of our work is email campaigns for large nonprofits. And we were particularly curious to learn the reasons why organizations continue to see email as a priority for greater investment. And the quotes here show a few, some of the key drivers. Uh, e email enables highly personalized communications. It provides a channel to very specific audience segments. Um, and email has been seen as a safe constant in a shifting landscape. Uh, particularly as Facebook and Twitter fade as reliable channels. Um, so the respondents talked about why email is important from a strategic perspective in their communications, but we think there's another reason at play here, which is that it's simply less complex to implement. Uh, typically the nonprofits we work with see tighter integration between the CRM and the email tools to create marketing personalization. It's that you know, the email tools are and the CRM are already sort of pre-built to connect together. Sometimes they're even sold as a package suite. Uh, and so there's relatively little work to get that 
uh, functionality up and running and, and, and show results. Um, conversely, we see very little integration for personalization between the CRM and the website CMS, Google or otherwise. Um, and this sort of sets up a three-on-one competition uh, among these four priorities because more progress can be made faster between the CRM and email. So rounding out our questions on priorities for the near future, we asked what organizations plan to pursue this year and next. The two highest priorities were take better advantage of the tools that are already in place and better integration of data across the current stack. And these are, I think these are pretty interrelated. The first point is something we hear often from clients um, that they've investigated, uh, investigated, they've invested in sophisticated technology but aren't able to take full advantage of it. Often they say their teams are stretched too thin uh, or the tool ended up being too complicated for their staff to learn or use efficiently. And the second point, uh, you know, addressing data fragmentation is a major area of focus uh, for us and our clients right now. Um, all, all this says that you know, organizations do believe that they have the right tools in place, uh, they just need help making it all work together. We also asked respondents to look back to their most recent big technology investment. Uh, and most said their most recent big move was to a new CRM. Uh, most added that it had been a long and bumpy road uh, with a lot of pushback deadlines. And many were still struggling to make use of the new platform long after the project uh, officially completed. Which is why this work continues to be a, pr a top priority. Getting to a good place with CRM uh, is seen as a prerequisite for unlocking a lot of other uh, capabilities. Many or organizations also reported that they recently updated their website. But uh, in, in at least half of, of those cases, uh, that was driven not by, less by a strategic priority than the need to uh, uh, do a major version upgrade uh, or just needing to upgrade uh, the technology uh, for the site, you know, particularly uh, in many cases moving from Drupal 7 to uh, Drupal 8, 9, 10. So what do these findings tell us? Um, 2022 year-end saw revenue decline across nonprofits' digital programs uh, in our work and, and reported by some of our peers in the space. And this continued a year-long trend of lower gift volume as people have worried about the state of the economy. So less revenue combined with more digital marketing tools means organizations are making tough choices between platforms for attention and investments. And the survey suggests to us these takeaways. Um, first, organizations take on a change to the CRM when it's seen as a strategic imperative. And then once started, it becomes a consuming priority for several years. Following a CRM implementation or migration, an organization's need to better integrate data comes into sharper focus. And then that drives a new set of priorities in that direction. And then conversely, or because perhaps because of prioritized investments in the CRM, organizations are currently making big changes to the website less frequently. Um, and when they do, it's often not driven by strategy, but it's in reaction to required updates or technical debt, as Jack mentioned. So to put this in another way, um, organizations know that their website could be improved, uh, but they choose to get by with what they have for another year um, because upgrades to the CRM are seen as more crucial. Uh, so for everyone here, I'd love to get a raise of hands if this resonates with what you're seeing. So about mm, you know, six or seven people is the hand. So uh, you know, obviously this isn't a trend for everyone, but we think that this is uh, you know, sort of becoming a, a real concern in, in our space and you know, that there's just only so much you can do and there's a sort of a sense of capture uh, by the CRM providers of, of budgets. Like it's sort of once we step on this path, uh, we, we have trouble like doing the other things that we thought we'd be able to do because it's bigger and more expensive than we were led to believe, for example, uh, is a, a concern that we're seeing. So we've talked so far about uh, how the survey suggests that the website has been losing a bit of ground in competition uh, for investment with other parts of the stack. But in the last few slides, we'll look to turn back at the website and say what the survey revealed about the challenges and opportunities there. So we asked, what are your most significant website challenges? 
Uh, and the two most common responses were integrating external systems with the site and measuring and optimizing performance. These resonate with what we heard about making systems work well together. It's a, it's a priority to incorporate the website into the broader MarTech stack uh, to unlock things like website personalization and behavioral data collection. There's a lot of eagerness, I think, to, to get more sophisticated in how websites engage visitors if we could only get the various data systems working well together to enable it. Uh, but despite those challenges, we have seen recently that the website has been outperforming uh, other channels like email, uh, as we'll see uh, on the next slide. Yeah, so fundraising is obviously a key job for the website for nonprofits uh, in general. And so we wanted to share what Blue State has been seeing outside of the survey um, in this area. And so overall in 2022, it was a down year for fundraising, um, which shouldn't be surprising given the overall concerns about the economy and waves of layoffs that we saw at the end of the year in particular. Um, so 2022 year-end results saw a decline, about 5% um, in general. But email in particular sagged by about 15% uh, compared to the previous year. Um, however, while revenue was down generally, more than half of our clients saw increases in revenue attributed solely to the website. So meaning finding the site organically, not driven from a media buy, email or social, coming in through the front door, getting inspired and deciding to make a donation. So someone on that particular journey, we're seeing actually a raise uh, in, in the results at the end of the year. Uh, and, and that was remarkable compared, you know, given the overall decline. Um, so helping to make improvements to the website to optimize those journeys actually can move the needle and raise more. Um, so in our work with clients, we're focusing more efforts on SEO, you know, increasing the top of funnel, uh, on A-B testing to optimize journeys once people arrive at the site and remove fr friction in the donation paths, um, and ultimately raise conversions. Um, in particular, mobile journeys are something that we're realizing uh, you can really make a lot of gains in. So on average, close to 60% of all traffic coming to the website is from mobile, but only 36% of donations are from mobile. So you get many more visitors, uh, but many fewer donations. And so, and also the average donation size is about half when given from mobile. So $196 versus 94 is, is uh, some of the data from last year. Um, so digging in to optimize the journey on mobile, uh, it really is an opportunity to move the needle. And it's something that um, we're starting to do with more of our clients and sort of evangelizing this idea. So while we recognize the practical challenges that organizations face as they seek to incorporate new tools and unify their data, uh, we're encouraged that most organizations still see the website as their most important asset for marketing and engagement. And for half, the website's only increasing uh, in priority. Uh, I'm going to call out two of these quotes. Um, it is our main engine for driving engagement with uh, the core audience we serve. And diminishing returns and attribution challenges make upper funnel even more important to Sam's point on, on the last slide. Uh, so to end, uh, I'll share some advice we've been giving our nonprofit clients for how to maximize their limited time and budget. Don't think about updates to the website in terms of a three or five year cycle of major rebuilds. Shift to thinking about frequent incremental improvements. Think about the website as a revenue generating digital product with an ongoing roadmap. Especially since we know that many orgs have recently done a, a, a major a website redesign or upgrade, you know, it's likely that the site is in, in, in good shape to sort of grow incrementally now as opposed to needing a full, you know, full, uh, full rebuild or upgrade. And that gives an organization the flexibility to focus on whatever's the most pressing issue of the moment, whether it be website performance, SEO, the mobile user experience, uh, or even adding in some level of personalization as the rest of the stack um, catches up. So it's not revolutionary, it's also not how most of our clients work. Um, for those who have made the transition, uh, we're able to be a lot more agile and make more consistent progress um, on the website. So uh, we wanted to round up by giving a shout to a few partners who helped us recruit survey participants. So uh, thanks to Kenobi Studios, to Forum One, to Kalamuna, to ThinkShout, WDG, uh, Capellic, Corner Shop Creative, and Pantheon. And with that, we'd be really happy to answer questions and also, uh, if anyone wants to take a shot of our email addresses, we'd be happy to share this deck with you 
uh, we intend to publish this more formally in the coming weeks. And so, are there any questions? <laughs> Michelle. So the question is, what was surprising? What did we go in? Uh, what, what did we go in not expecting, and that we saw from the results? Um, I would say the the statement that we think we already have all the tools we need, but we're not taking the best advantage of them, and then that's the pain point: is that you know we we don't need something new. We just need to use everything that we've already invested in better. Um, any insights that stuck out to you? Uh, no, I think that's right. I mean, it, it does resonate with um, you know some of our clients. You know, I think that there's you know there there's a, a range of feeling on on technology adoption. I think um, you know some clients have invested in you know sophisticated marketing cloud platforms uh, and are now frustrated and questioning that investment because they're not taking full advantage of it. Others are just you know sort of uh, looking to invest more, looking to figure out how to get past those. You know the, the the complexities, the staff limitations, the, the things that are, are are getting in the way of, of taking that taking that next step. Uh, so the question is, what is the next step if you are struggling with integrating the website into the broader stack? And and you know this is um, this is just a, an existential thing for us in our work because we, we're we're eager to make progress and, and you know and, and we see strategies that should be achievable, uh, but year after year they get deprioritized. And even when we have an, an uh, you know an ongoing relationship where we're helping plan the roadmap. Um, some of these things just end up getting set aside year after year, and so it's frustrating to us. Um, the one thing that we really would love to see um, and should be simple to achieve is the personalization of a CTA and a website to resemble somewhat what we we're able to do on the email side. So it's very typical you know, for the email journey to be get someone to sign up to the email list, and then once they're there, start you know, asking them for donations, tailoring the ask to what, you know, their, their donation history and what we know about their interests. Um, and why don't we do that on, on, the, on the website side? It should be very simple for the CTA to say, if, you know, if you're not signed up already, sign up for our email list. And if we know you've given something in the past, you know, or, or may ask for the first donation if they've never given, and if they've given before, ask them to become a monthly donor or ask them to give more. And those three states are pretty simple and we have the data on the CRM side we know you know we know all of those things but we don't actually have a single client uh, that has succeeded even the largest organizations that have you know the most sophisticated tools are, are, are doing this on their website and you know Drupal websites included and so why is that um, and it's just there's a lot of friction getting the data over to the website um, and so, um, I don't know if anyone saw uh, Elevated Third's presentation of their um, uh, personalization tool. They've, they've presented it in a number of Drupal cons this time, Smart Content. You know, we are looking to use that um, in conjunction with the CDP with some of our clients where we can actually get the data over to make that, that, that very simple journey happen. Um, and, uh, it, it, and the question is, if we don't want to, if an organization doesn't want to invest in a CDP, you know, how can we still get things going like that? I don't know if you have any thoughts to add. Yeah, I, I mean, I think CDPs are really promising for this, right? So, like adopting a, a tool like Segment or or Buconic or you know, um, there's a whole wide range of them that um, can be uh, you know much more nimble in terms of what data it's collecting, how it's storing that data, how it's making it available directly to the website. Um, and, 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 and being able to connect to a wider range of, of systems uh, more easily, I think there's, a, there's just a lot of promise there, but it is, it is an investment. Um, in the meantime, you know, I, I did a webinar a couple of years ago actually about how uh, to just, you know, if you have specific tactics, like the light box example that Sam was giving, um, that you, you think can move the needle and you want to experiment with, 
uh, just sort of c go at the problem of getting that specific piece of data, like that, you know, like someone's, uh, you know, last donation, uh, get that either in a cookie or into the content management system somehow, whether e even if it's manual, it's not a sustainable solution, but if you can make that like some specific piece of data available to the website, uh, you know, in some, you know, timely way, then you can start to sort of experiment incrementally with, with some of those tactics. Again, it's not sustainable and it's not, it's not necessarily simple, but, you know, we do think that, you know, not asking somebody for their email after you've already gotten it or, you know, not recognizing that someone, you know, is a donor to your site when you pop up that, that light box or the, you know, whatever ask you're making, like not recognizing their history with you is that's detrimental. Like that, that's, that's, uh, that's something that is, is worth, um, trying to address, um, and, and, and trying to, you know, get, get the person to, to deepen the relationship by recognizing where they are with you, um, and, and making sure that you're always making the right next, next ask. One of the things that we've seen, um, I, I, if anyone here uses the uh, platform Neon, is that they've recently reintroduced a uh, CMS product, uh, you know, going back in the direction that Blackbot originally was pursuing, just because they want their customers to be able to create these effects, you know, to have this integration. And, uh, and I was very surprised to see them launch that last year uh, in sort of a, a step back in the, you know, the direction that, that we had been going for a number of years in the space. Any question over here? Um, yeah, it, it, sorry, uh, the question is, um, uh, how, uh, how are, uh, well, data warehousing is relatively low on the importance list, um, and the question is, is how are organizations, uh, you know, pu pulling all this data together and, and doing personalization if, if they're not prioritizing, uh, data warehousing, and <clears throat> from what we've seen, like, there's, there's a lot of variation in our clients in their, in how much they've invested in data and data warehousing. Like some of our clients have full data teams. They're you know running uh, uh, you know Snowflake or or uh, Redshift warehouses and, and and they have invested in this. Um, uh, and then others others just haven't. And so you know we sort of see our role as um, sort of helping to bridge that gap in a couple of different ways. Uh, one is just you know helping with uh, you know whether it's point-to-point -point data integration or, or helping to sort of solve some of the CRM challenges, even if it's not a data warehouse, if you can get as much as possible connected to the CRM and then, you know, use that as a, a jumping point to push it into, you know, the marketing marketing tools uh, from there. Um, you know, and we, we are also, um, like as Blue State, we're investing in, in a, not, not necessarily, I wouldn't call it a data warehousing platform, but we are investing in a, a reporting platform that uh, we can sort of hand to our clients who don't have uh, sophisticated um, data teams of their own, um, you know, wh what we're doing is we're building something that is relatively easy to deploy that can collect data from all these different sources for the purposes of reporting. Um, we haven't necessarily taken the leap yet to say, okay, we're actually going to build you a data warehouse that we can then push back, you know, audiences into all these different tools, but, you know, that's potentially a next step. Um, again, that's not necessarily answering your question about, like, what organizations can do, but you know, we're you know, as as an agency, we are trying to help our clients by providing them with um, you know reasonable cost, you know, templated solutions that can 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 help to to fill some of those gaps. Any other questions? Well, thanks again for attending, and um, <laughs> looking forward to sharing this with you.